He rules the world without the world knowing it. He watches 2 billion people without them knowing it. And he has started to think that he is invincible. He is Mark Zuckerberg, the all-powerful CEO of Facebook. And his empire is turning into a threat that needs to be addressed immediately. Hi and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I am your host Shubhangi and in this video, we shall discuss how Facebook's very own are starting to think of Mark Zuckerberg as the most powerful king of the world who needs to be contained before it's too late. Let's begin. Mark Zuckerberg. He is the chairman co-founder and chief executive officer of Facebook and controls around 60% of the voting shares. Needless to say, he is a significant and exceptionally powerful man. And recently, the significance and the extent of power Mark Zuckerberg holds was confirmed by Benny Thomas, Facebook's global planning lead. A new undercover video recently released by Project Veritas shows Facebook's global planning lead himself stating that Facebook has too much power and that government action is not only warranted but necessary to limit the damage the big tech giant does to society. Yes, one of Facebook's very own is highlighting the dangers of the powers the internet giant holds. Mark Zuckerberg, by holding a majority of decision-making control over Instagram, Facebook Messenger, Oculus and WhatsApp, has the capacity to single-handedly influence the actions, choices and narratives of 2 billion people. He has access to one of the biggest pools of data available on this planet, Alphabet Inc. being the only competition. In the undercover video, we can see Facebook's global planning lead make some eye-opening revelations. Benny Thomas said, Most people don't understand these things and most people don't think about them, which is why a lot goes down because a lot of people aren't paying attention. He went on to say, No king in the history of the world has been the ruler of 2 billion people, but Mark Zuckerberg is, and he's 36. That's too much for a 36-year-old. You should not have power over 2 billion people. I just think that's wrong. Earlier in 2019, New York University Stern School of Business professor Scott Galloway said, The notion that we are going to have one individual deciding the algorithms for an encrypted backbone of 2.7 billion people is frightening, regardless of that person's intentions. He went ahead and added, a key safeguard for society is the diversity of media slash viewpoints, checks and balances. Galloway also added that people should be concerned by the quote-unquote notion that one set of algorithms controlled by one person who cannot be removed from office would have a significant influence over the platform through which billions of Facebook users around the world consume information every day. These were only theorizations back in 2019, and a lot has happened since. The whole Donald Trump episode, as well as the revelations via V, the Cambridge Analytica scandal, among many others, have provided instances where this mega machinery, that is Facebook, was used to compromise freedom of speech and expression, as well as people's right to privacy. Earlier in January, Adam Mosseri, the head of Instagram, a subsidiary of Facebook, had openly admitted that Facebook was not a neutral platform and has its political biases. This was followed by the banning and deplatforming of Donald Trump, the then sitting president of the most powerful country in the world, the USA. This can be a great measuring tool to understand the extent of power Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg hold in this changing world order. The event of deplatforming of Donald Trump highlighted how social media giants like Facebook can create a narrative against almost anyone based on fake news and concocted lies from their platforms, and thus stifle free speech and right to information with absolutely no consequences. Facebook can and has impacted elections big time. The fact that Benny Thomas, Facebook's global planning lead, himself admitted that he was part of a Facebook project that pushed to register voters and said that he believes Joe Biden benefited from it is the most overt exemplification of the same. In an earlier leaked video, Mark Zuckerberg was also seen endorsing Joe Biden's policies in a closed meeting with his employees. 
The danger of Facebook impacting the elections in a way making a joke out of the whole democratic exercise of conducting and partaking in elections is real and has made countries take on Facebook to curb its powers. Australia has already made Facebook reach an agreement with news agencies in its sovereign territories for profit sharing. Similar steps have been taken by France. Facebook is forced to follow the strict European Union's privacy policy and other countries are also emulating the EU model. Even Russian authorities have taken to task social media giants like Facebook and have clearly warned them to either behave as per the law of the land or get out. The most direct step to curb the influence of Facebook and other social media giants was undertaken by Uganda. The government of Uganda back in January had banned all social media apps and platforms in the country including Facebook, Twitter and WhatsApp, citing the gross interference of such platforms in the country's democratic process. The actions are also visible in the Republican states of Florida and Texas. While Florida is looking to rein in big tech with legislation addressing censorship, election interference and privacy concerns, Texas's governor Greg Abbott also announced, "We are working with Senator Hughes on legislation to prevent social media providers like Facebook and Twitter from canceling conservative speech." So, it makes perfect sense when even the Facebook global planning lead expresses a need for government intervention in Facebook and diversifying the control over Facebook, curbing the powers of Mark Zuckerberg. This effectively means breaking up this big tech giant, which is what many have been calling for to safeguard democracy. And this is not the first instance, however. The scale is much larger than the 80s when another large company was broken down into smaller entities as the government found it to be too big. In 1899, American Telephone and Telegraph, AT&T, took over the American Bell Telephone Company and using Alexander Graham Bell's patent for telephone, became the behemoth of the industry with absolute control. So, in 1984, US government broke up AT&T into US West, Ameritech, NYNEX, Bell South and others, while AT&T retained control of its long-distance business. AT&T, Verizon and CenturyLink would collectively absorb most of the spun-off companies. Mark Zuckerberg has become extremely powerful and going ahead he is sure to be a danger for the normal functioning of the world's democracies. As Facebook misuses its algorithms to psychologically influence more and more areas of thought among populations across the world. That is why when Benny Thomas talks about breaking up Facebook, he is entirely correct. and past precedents tell us that the american government can definitely do it so zuckerberg may think that he is invincible but not for long